Hi everyone and welcome to my channel, and today I will be reading an Arlucchino Exocenter by me. So let's get into it. The cool damp air of Fontaine pressed heavily around you, thick with the scent of rain and wet stone. You staggered, clutching your side, your fingers slick with blood. Everything that could have gone wrong today went wrong. And though you'd managed to complete your task, it was at a steep cost. And now every step was a test of will as you forced yourself to keep moving through the darkened alleys. You leaned against the wall, breathing shallowly, and hoping that maybe, just maybe, everything would be fine, that the bleeding might slow. The night around you was silent, but your mind was anything but. Arlequino's words echoed in your head, stern reminders from every mission briefing. Stay focused, stay vigilant, and don't make mistakes. And here you are, bleeding and half stumbling, barely keeping your vision steady. You press your palm harder against the wound. Grimacing. Perhaps she'd be furious to see you like this. So weak and vulnerable. So reckless. But then, as if summoned by your thoughts, a familiar figure appears at the end of the alley. Earl Kino herself. Even from a distance, her presence was unmistakable. Calm, composed, and deadly. Her eyes narrow as they lock onto you, taking in the blood smeared across your hand and the way you're struggling to stay upright. And without a word, she closes the distance between you, her steps brisk but controlled, and she's beside you in an instant, slipping one arm around your shoulders, supporting your weight with ease. Her grip is firm, steadying you, as she assesses the damage with piercing, analytical eyes. What happened? She demands, her voice low and calm, and your feelings of pain are just briefly overcome by embarrassment. You did not want to see her be disappointed. You didn't want to fail. But right now... There was no option but to see that disappointment into her eyes as soon as you finished talking. I got ambushed. I didn't expect them. You said, each word coming out with difficulty. And Arlequina's eyes narrowed, anger simmering beneath the surface. And though you know it's not directed at you, she shifts her arm slightly to better support you, her gloved fingers pressing gently against your side to check the wound. And for a moment, you think you see something like weary flicker across her face, though it's quickly hidden behind her usual mask of steely control. She does not scold you like you would expect, does not ask why you didn't call for help. Instead, she guides you carefully down the alley, her steps measured, keeping pace with your stumbling gait. We need to get you somewhere safe. This alley is too exposed. She says, more to herself than you. And you manage a faint humorless smile. I didn't know you cared so much. And her gaze instantly snaps to you dark and intense, as if the very idea offends her. But she does not deny it. Instead, her fingers press a little more firmly into your side, a silent reminder to stay focused. Don't be foolish. I can't have you dying on me. She replies, her tone flat, but carrying a subtle warmth as the closest thing to affection that she would ever allow herself. And so, 
you let yourself relax slightly in her grip as she leads you toward a narrow doorway, pushing it open with a swift practiced motion. Inside, it's dimly lit and cramped, but it was private nonetheless. She eases you onto a bench, kneeling down to inspect your wound with a practiced eye. Hold still, she instructs, her tone leaving no room for argument, and you bite back a groan as she lifts the fabric that was stuck to your skin. Her hands move deftly as she examined the wound, her face unreadable, and the slight furrow in her brow was the only indication of her concern. This will need stitching, she mutters, reaching into her coat to pull out a small, neatly organized kit. You've seen her do this a dozen of times, treating her own injuries with that same calm precision. But now, as her hands work to clean and stitch the wound, there is a gentleness to her touch that takes you by surprise. I don't know how you can stay so calm. You murmur, your voice tinged with exhaustion. Because one of us has to. And clearly, and clearly you can't be trusted to take care of yourself. She says, and although she sounds a little bit exasperated, there is a very faint hint of amusement in her tone, though her expression remains serious, and you manage a weak chuckle. But then it fades away, as pain surges through you when she pulls the needle through. She pauses, glancing up at you with a rare softness in her eyes. Does it hurt too much? Nothing I can't handle. If I remember correctly, that's also what you said when I gave you this mission. You don't have to be strong all the time. And you do not have to pretend to be. At least not with me. She says quietly. And the admission startles you. And just for a moment, you forget the pain. I know you would rather handle things on your own, but next time, don't be so reckless. If things go wrong, then you call for me, all right? Her words, spoken so softly, felt like a promise, one that she would never make lightly. And you nod, too exhausted to do much else but trusting in her words, knowing that if you did call her, she would always come to your aid. And although their relationship between the TV was rocky, you knew you were a little bit special. At the very least, she treated you differently than how she treated everyone else. And that was simply just something for you to think about. Although... You weren't sure if it would ever come up between you again.